Okay, hi there, welcome to another in our series of videos uh, looking at the concept of welfare losses and applying it to different micro and macro areas of your economics courses. So let's spend a few minutes thinking about the welfare loss that is possible if a government introduces a protectionist policy known as an import tariff. Now, customs duties on imports are called tariffs, they're taxes on the goods, nearly always the goods that come into a country. And import tariffs uh, give a price advantage to locally or domestically produced goods over similar goods which might come from overseas. And tariffs also raise revenue for governments, so governments stand to benefit. But crucially, from our point of view, uh, they can also lead to a loss of economic welfare. And again, as we've been saying in these videos, if you bring in the concept of a welfare loss, into your analysis that can certainly lift your analysis marks in all different types of economics exams. A couple of good examples, uh, the Chinese decision to levy a high import tariff on pork products in 2022 and the UK government uh, extending measures to def defend the ailing steel sector by introducing a tariff on steel now that we're outside the European Union. Well, I thought I'd do, I'd take the pork example. So let's look at the market for pork and consider some of the welfare effects of an import tariff. In the absence of trade, there's our domestic supply curve and domestic demand. This is, if you like, Chinese producers of pork supply and demand. And there's the domestic equilibrium price shown there. Uh, but if we allow pork to be traded freely across national borders and assuming that other countries perhaps can produce and supply pork more cheaply, Let's assume the world supply curve is at P1. It's the world price without any form of import protectionism. So we call it the free trade price. And if Chinese producers are exposed to world prices, they can supply Q2, but uh, other countries can supply a much greater quantity of pork. And the total demand for pork will be at Q1. And that means that uh, there is a gap between domestic demand and domestic supply. And the result uh, is that we're going to have to import a lot of pork. In fact, the import quantity will be Q2, Q1. Now, we're focusing here on welfare. So we need to bring in the concept of consumer surplus. So we assume that at the price P1, if the quantity Q1 of pork is being demanded, then total consumer surplus is area A, B, P1, that big triangle. Of course, that represents the idea that cheap imports bring down prices for consumers and encourage a high level of consumer surplus. Well, the producer surplus is low. It's P1 CD because domestic producers are unable really to compete at that low, very low price. So they would, they would get a low level of producer surplus. That is clearly going to change once we introduce a tariff. So a tariff adds to the import price. We tax imports, a duty on customs coming in. Let's assume the price goes up to P2. So the tariff is the vertical distance between those two green lines. As a result of the tariff, domestic demand for pork will contract from Q1 to Q3. Higher prices mean people can't afford to buy as much in real terms. Domestic producers are better able to supply pork. So they'll expand production from C to F, they'll move up their supply curve. Production will expand from Q2 to Q4. And we'll add a few more letters in because they're going to become quite interesting and quite useful when we come on to the welfare consequences. So the gap between imports and exports will get squeezed from Q2 to Q1. Import tariffs come in and the demand of pork imported falls to Q4, Q3. But again, our focus here is on welfare. Well, the consumer surplus before the tariff was the big triangle A, B, P1. After the tariff with higher prices, P2, consumer surplus falls to A, E, P2. And that's a big fall, a trapezium fall of P2, E, B, P1. So there's been quite a big fall in consumer surplus. Essentially, what the tariff does is it causes a switch, a transfer of consumer welfare to other agents in the economy. Well, producers, Chinese pork producers in this example, they gain because they can now sell more pork, Q4, at a higher price, P2. So whereas the initial producer surplus was low at P1 CD, after the tariff, producer surplus goes up to 
P2 F uh, D, which is an increase of P2 F C P1. So there's been quite a significant increase in producer surplus. Of course, that was consumer surplus. Uh, the government gets some tax revenue. Remember, tariffs, customs duties generate revenue for governments. They will get the tax per unit multiplied by the quantity of imports. So they will get the area F E H G. Again, that used to be consumer surplus. Now that, that now gets transferred to the government in the form of uh, tax revenue. But there's two areas here of consumer surplus that either haven't gone to the domestic producers or have gone to government in the form of tax revenue. And these are, are indeed the welfare losses. So the deadweight welfare loss from a tariff is the area C, F, G and E, B, H. And the reason that this is consumer surplus that's lost, which doesn't go to producers or government, it becomes a deadweight loss. And those are the two areas. And so that's the area of deadweight loss of welfare due to an import tariff. Now, tariff diagrams, very popular in exams and lots of questions on them. Um, uh, it's a very common exam style question, the consequences of import tariffs. If you can bring in the concept of welfare losses and elucidate and apply the ideas and think about the consequences for consumers, then your analysis will be at a higher level. and Therefore, so too will your evaluation. So hopefully this was a useful short video on welfare loss from import tariffs. Thanks for joining in on this video.